Welcome to r slash entitled people where this girl's entitled friend tries to use her as a free ATM on holiday Friend wants to use me as her backup ATM next month I am going away on vacation with a long time friend. We're going to the Caribbean for five nights It's not all inclusive. So we will be responsible for paying for food drinks and any activities My friend asked me how much I was bringing in cash I said $300 cash plus debit and credit cards. She told me she's going to bring $300 in cash, but no debit or credit cards. She said she's on a budget and $300 is her limit. I explained that that comes to around only $60 per day. This is not one of the cheaper Caribbean islands. So after food and drink alone, that won't leave her with much left over. I reminded her that she needs to factor in cabs, incidentals, or any activities we may decide to do. And you never know if an emergency will come up where she'll need money. But she says to me, well, that's why I have you and started to laugh. That angered me to no end. I tell her that we're both adults who are responsible for our own selves. It would be one thing if she lost her purse and needed money. I'd float her money before she even had time to ask. But to purposely use me as her backup ATM, yeah, that's not going to work. I told her that now that I know what she's up to, I'm not going to go along with it. If she runs out of money, she'll just be asked out and hungry. She needs to bring her cards with her for her own good. She's now telling me I am too harsh and she'll bring extra money, but no cards. I told her, do what she wants, but if there's an emergency, she is on her own. Now, the great news about this story is that OP posted an update after the trip ended. And uh, yeah, let's see how it went down and just how her friend reacted. So first of all, OP says, thanks to everyone for the feedback and suggestions. It truly did save the vacation. Here are the highlights. One, some of you said that the hotel would want a credit card on file from the person who made the reservation. Now, my friend was the one who booked the vacation. She put the whole thing on her credit card because she wanted the card points. I told her because the reservation was booked through a third party app, the hotel would need the original card used to make the reservation. So she was on the hook to bring her credit card. I've got no idea if that is true or not, but it sounded good based on what you guys commented. She wasn't happy that her own greed got her, but at least she brought a credit card. Secondly, others mentioned that she was going to sulk and sulk she did. When we got to the airport, I told her I was not going to spend the vacation in her misery. So let's hash it out right now. She said that my tone was very rude as if I was accusing her of trying to mooch off of me but that's what she was doing. I told her to put herself in my shoes. She was deliberately not being responsible and told me to my face that I was her backup plan and laughed about it. It made me feel used and put upon. She apologized and I apologize for being so harsh. Number three, some of you said she would try to be content with cutting corners. Cabs were prohibitively expensive on the island and they didn't take credit cards. So she looked up how to take the local buses. I was fine with that until we waited 45 minutes in the heat for a bus to take us to the mall, island time. Yep, we only took cabs after that. Number four, a few mentioned that she would go through her cash in the first two days. You were close, two and a half days. There were several markets with local jewelry and crafts that she absolutely loved and they only took cash. So she ran through her money rather quickly. She only brought her credit card, not her debit card. So as someone suggested, I made her sell me right then and there the money that I took out the ATM for her. She paid for the exchange and ATM fees. Five, she tried it with the meals. She ordered something big and wanted to split the bill evenly. Normally, I would not nitpick about that, but I just didn't want her to feel like she still got one over me in any way. Since she used her credit card for meals to save the cash she had, I paid what I owed in cash and she paid the rest, her higher portion, with her credit card. And six, Overall, we had a good time. We did a few excursions, had shopping and beach time, and relaxed. She even told me it was a good thing she brought her credit card. Things only got weird when I asked her to sell me right then and there at the ATM before I gave her the cash, but she knew why I was being so hard-nosed about it. Well, there we go. I think that that right there is how to deal with Entitled People 101. If you know you're going away with somebody that can be a little bit entitled, says things like, oh, don't worry, you'll just give me money if I run out, stuff like that, I think that is the method. You have to just set your stall out from early, be hard, be tough on them. They're not gonna like it, but you have to do it and just say, no, this isn't gonna run. This is how things are gonna work. You're gonna spend your own money on the things you buy. I'm gonna do the same. And uh, yeah, I'm not gonna be your free ATM, obviously. Now, of course, it was a little bit awkward in a couple of moments and you don't want that, but think how awkward and terrible it could have been for you personally, OP, if 
there had been no credit card provided from your friend and you'd had to fund it all and you probably wouldn't have got the money back, etc., etc. It would have been a terrible trip. So the fact is, because you posted on Reddit, got all that great advice and were really disciplined with your friend, it seemed like you had a good time actually overall. And uh, yeah, if not for that, I really don't think you would have done. Now for our next entitled people story. A crazy woman attacked my daughter at the movies. My daughter, who is 16, is part of the LGBTQ community and she likes to dress in a very androgynous slash boyish way this is okay she's always been like this and this year she's been free to express herself a few months ago she got a pixie cut which looks amazing on her when the super mario movie came out she went to see it at the cinema with some of her friends i wasn't there so this is the story she told me after the film they wanted to go somewhere else to eat but first she went to the toilet in the theater there, she saw a middle-aged woman and her little daughter. Now, my daughter was quick, but when she came out of the stool, the woman confronted her. One of the things she said was, Why are you here? You should not be here. My daughter was obviously confused. And then the woman grabbed her by the hair and shouted, Why are you after my child? My daughter then cried and said, Please, let me go. After begging as if her life depended on it, the woman let her go and then demanded that she prove she was a girl. My daughter cried and froze while this crazy woman screamed at her and told her to take off her trousers. She refused, of course, but a man came in, saw what was happening and said to the woman, Honey, what the hell are you doing? The woman pointed to my daughter and said, This man tried to touch my child. The man just looked at her in confusion and said, Let's get out of here now. So they left and didn't come back security was called but they'd already left the theater my daughter was reunited with her friends and then she called me she was very upset and panicked obviously it was traumatic for her we're still working on it but she's been very quiet in therapy the days after that she tried to dress as feminine as possible she almost looked like barbie but i could tell she was miserable and hated every minute of it we tried begging her to stop and just be herself, but she's afraid that some random person will attack her again. She finally stopped, but is trying to be modest in her style. I've had enough of this town. Since my husband and I became openly LGBTQ allies, we've seen some people ostracize us. Even my sister told me I should match my daughter with a boy to fix her. It's even worse for her, of course, because her school does nothing about bullying and the school district is discussing banning books. I was seriously planning to move to a bigger city and a better state and both my daughter and my husband agreed. I'm very sad that I didn't realize earlier how bigoted this town and my environment are because until last year, we didn't deviate from the norm. I need to make sure that my daughter can be safe and be herself. Since she came out, our bonds as a family have become so much stronger but relations with the rest of the town have deteriorated and many bridges are being burned. But they're not my daughter, so I don't care. Wow, that is incredibly sad, to be honest. Um, the fact that you have to leave an entire area that, hey, maybe, maybe it's been a nice place because they're just bigoted or the, the environment and the people are just, you know, openly homophobic it is crazy. I can't quite fathom that, but yeah, all I'd say is if you guys all are in agreement and you can financially do it, do it. You've got to for the sake of your daughter and yourselves as well. And you don't want to be around people like that anyway, no matter, you know, which way you swing. But for your daughter, for her to have a life where she feels accepted and doesn't feel forced to dress in a certain way, that is truly tragic. Yeah. You've got to move as quickly as you can. Now, the final post in today's episode is actually an update from another episode of mine that you guys seem to really enjoy. It was from a few days ago. I'll put the link down below in the top line of the description. The thumbnail is on screen right now. But just to remind you briefly of what happened, there are a number of stories, a number of updates from the same person. And we pretty much just went through them all one by one. And I said at the end of that one, if there was another update, then I'd cover it. And there is. So to give a little summary as to what happened overall in that story, it was all about OP going on a family vacation and just not wanting to be a free babysitter. Then his family found his post on Reddit. It kind of got a little bit more tense in the family, as you can probably guess. His sister then demanded he takes all his posts down. He said no. Then there was a final update after the family vacation. And now we have a little bit more. So here we go. Mother and sister saw my last post. They really don't know when to let well enough alone. Hey, mum. Hey, sis. I warned you that if you didn't stop, I would go right back to Reddit. And here I am. The short of it is that my mother and sister saw my last post and freaked out. My sister was stalking my account for days because she knew I'd post. 
Well, what did she expect? That I'd just say everybody had a good time? She called me and cried that I made her look like a bad mother. I ended up replying, well, if the glass slipper fits. My sister argued with me some more, but I asked her to name anything in the post that was a lie. She tried several times, but I pointed out that every detail was spot on. So what does she do? She calls mummy. Then my mother showed up at my door, demanding I delete all the posts. I told her no, and now I have ammunition for one more. I ended up making her leave crying. I spoke with my mother and father over the phone later and bluntly told them that their enabling of my sister led to the previous family dynamic. I will never go back to how things were. So if they have any hope of that left, I'm stuffing it out for good. My parents then told my sister for the love of God to stop blaming me and to leave me alone. They can't take the stress of my retaliation anymore. Well, my sister had a literal no one loves me pity party and my parents had to snap her back to reality. My brother-in-law hasn't called. Pretty sure he's staying indifferent slash neutral. But this can't be good for his marriage or my familial connection to him. So out of respect to my brother-in-law, I am sorry, man, but your wife just pushed me too far. Currently, my parents are insisting my sister gets counseling because she can't be a mum and juggle the habits of her old life too. Woman up, as they say. Either way, I'm hoping this is my last post. You hear that, sis? If you don't stop thinking I should have been your personal slave, babysitter, watchdog, etc., etc., and you want to keep acting like the whole world is against you because you can't lord over me, then we can't be around each other. Maybe we can get along and move past this rubbish if you're willing. Don't give me a reason to write anything else, and the Reddit posts about you end here. I'll only post ones involving me and the treatment I get from people. Treat me like a decent human being, and this will be over. Capiche? And then we actually have one more final update from OP in this same post. My parents and I had a long talk in which they have apologized. And for the moment, we've agreed that I'll keep a bit of distance until Thanksgiving. I also had a man-to-man talk with my brother-in-law last night over some cold beers. He told my sister she needed counseling or he would separate from her. And they're in the process of finding her a counselor. He also told me that while my sister was an absolute witch to me, at home, she's a very loving and endearing wife but she also admitted that she liked being an only child. We're nearly a decade apart in age, so my sister held on to some resentment about that for a long time and just let it build up. She's agreed that she does need counseling. Hang on, I need to, hang on. Your sister is 10 years older than you then, right? I, I assume I'm getting that right. And is acting like this. I, I don't know why, I just presumed you were similar ages, but she's 10 years older than you and acting like a two-year-old. Unbelievable, what a person. Nonetheless, uh, let's carry on. She's agreed that she does need counseling and will be going as soon as they get it set up. They've also found a qualified babysitter to look after my nephews. Aside from those things, my brother-in-law did admit that he was angry with me too, but didn't step in when I needed him. So we've agreed that this was all just a very bad situation that needs to be ended. So we're just gonna let it rest in peace from here on out. And lastly, these posts have gotten me a girlfriend. The girl I like had a feeling it was me after she read them and was just waiting for me to say something and we'll be going on our first date tonight. So I thank everybody here for their immense support. I really needed it. And there we go. Nice little ending there. Good to see some positivity come from this story. It does actually sound like, you know, after all that's that's been said and done. Guys, if you haven't, by the way, seen an entire episode that has about four different stories from OP about his family, Go and watch that link down below. It, uh, it looks like we're getting somewhere. People are, are making up. Apologies are happening. People are maturing a little bit in your sister's case. I don't know if that's true, but at least she's accepted that she needs to go to counselling. That's a pretty crazy thing to do, to be fair. I mean, I rate it. I really do. Uh, yeah, she has the ultimatum from her husband, but still, it's a good thing to do to accept that, you know what, I need to I need to improve her or, or work on some things. And uh, the fact that you've got a girlfriend now or, you know, you're starting to date a girl is brilliant. If there's one thing this episode has shown, it's the power of Reddit as a community. And uh, yeah, I love it.